All right, in this lesson, we'll explore some additional methods that we can call on our group by object, as well as some of the columns within those data frames that are contained within our uh, grouped object. Let's begin by executing our code. So we now have our fortune data frame containing our original data set and our sectors variable containing our group by object. So I'll begin with the max method. I'm going to call sectors, which is our grouping. A variable or our group by variable and I'm going to call the max variable now what this is going to do is in our original data frame it's going to look at the left most column which is company and it's going to extract the max value now since company is a, uh, a string field it's going to extract the row from each grouping that has the highest um, alphabetical ranking so closer to the end of the alphabet so let's demonstrate this by actually calling this so it's going to return something similar to first or last, where it's going to give us a sector on the left that represents our index labels. And then you'll see these companies that are represented. And these companies represent the last alphabetical uh, ranking within that specific um, group. So what I mean by that is within the aerospace and defense sector, the Woodward company is the last alphabetically. That's why it's uh, appearing here as the company that's represented for that grouping. Similarly, for our apparel sector, Wolverine uh, Worldwide is the company that appears last when those companies in that apparel grouping are sorted alphabetically. And the reason that it's defaulting to the company column is because it's the most to the left on our data frame. That's what it's going to default to. And similarly, if I do sectors.min, which is minimum, it's going to return the company from each grouping that uh, shows up the earliest, so alphabetical ranking. So the uh, earliest company in our aerospace and defense grouping, which is our sector, is BE Aerospace. And similarly here we have Carters for apparel and so on. And as I scroll down, you can see that a lot of these companies do start with A's or B's or C's, so letters that are close to the beginning of the alphabet. Now, um, we have additional methods that are also available, such as mathematical methods. Now, something like max and min is going to apply regardless of what the column is, because pandas can sort numbers um, numerically, and it can also sort strings alphabetically. Sum is a concept that only applies to numbers or floats, so it's only going to apply this operation to our numeric columns, which are revenue, profits, and employees. So if I execute this, you'll see what it's going to do is create a data frame where we still have our sectors or our groups represented as the index labels. And here we're going to have the sum in that specific grouping. So what this means is here is the revenue totals for all of the companies that are stored within our aerospace and defense grouping. Similarly, here is a sum of all of the profits within our aerospace and defense grouping. I can prove this by just doing something like sectors, get group let's do apparel because it's an easy one we're going to get the apparel one and then if i take something like the revenue column from this and call the sum method on it you'll see we'll get ninety five thousand uh, nine hundred sixty eight and here we see that value represented in our revenue uh, representation here and similarly if i replace this with something like profits you can see it says 8,236, so here is our 8,236. So it's repeating the exact same operation for every single group or every single sector in this case, which is it's just taking the sum of all available columns within that grouping that are numeric. Now revenue, profits, and employees are the only columns that you can do a sum on, so it's displaying those three. And you can perform other operations, for example, the mean method will give you the average. So what this will tell you is that, for example, in the aerospace and defense sector, it's going to take a average or mean of all of the revenues for every company within that grouping. And it's going to tell us that the revenue average here is this number, the profit average is this number, and we have an average number of uh, 48,402 employees per company in our aerospace and defense grouping. So these methods can be called on the entire group by object. But many times it's also efficient to call them on specific values. So for example, we used the sum method uh, a little bit earlier to uh, on the directly on the group by object, which gave us all of the numeric columns. But if I just wanted to do it on something like revenue, what I can do is call my group by object, open my square brackets, and give it a name of a original column from our data frame that I want to focus on. 
So for example, I have this original Fortune data frame. If I want to just focus on revenue, I can type in revenue. That's not going to do anything by itself. But now if I call sum on it, that's basically going to give me a series where, again, the index labels represent the sectors or the groupings are 21 groupings and the sum represents the total of all of the revenues for the companies within those groupings. So I'm taking all of the companies that belong in aerospace and defense, I'm taking the values from the revenue column, I'm adding them up and then displaying it back. So for example in our aerospace and defense sector the companies have a total revenue of 357,940. I'd imagine this value is in, is in billions. Um, so that's how we call it on an individual column. So let's try a couple other examples. Let's say we want to find the total number of employees per sector. We can begin by just referencing our group by object, which is sectors, then our square brackets, then our column name from our original fortune data frame, what we want to aggregate on, which is employee. And then I can do something like sum. It's, oops, it's employees. And here we can see the total number of employees added up across all of those different companies, but still belonging to the same grouping. So there are a total of 968,000 employees in the companies that have a uh, value of aerospace and defense in the sector column in this uh, original data frame. We can also do something like calling uh, a max method. So here I'm extracting the profits column and what this is going to do is give me the uh, profit value of the company that has the most profit uh, within that sector. So we can see that the best performing company in aerospace and defense has a profit of 7,608 uh, and I can do the exact same thing with the min method. So if I want to see the company that's the worst performing I can do sectors profits which is the name of my original data frame column right here. And after that, I can call a method like um, min. And that's going to give me the worst performing result in each group or each sector. So here we're finally starting to see a lot of negatives. That indicates no profit, negative profit, so they're losing money. So predictably, these values are going to be significantly lower. Um, we can also do things like take averages. So if let's say we go back to our employees focus and let's say I want to see the average number of employees that work in a company in a given group. There you can see the average number of employees. Um, again, all of this information was represented when we called it on the entire group by object. This is just allowing us to uh, perform this operation on a single column. Now if we want to do something in between, let's say we wanted to do two of these columns, revenues and profit, but we didn't want to include employees. The process is very similar. We can just do sectors, which is our group by object a pair of square brackets to extract and then as always we can feed a list so we can provide revenue and profits those are the two columns that we want to aggregate on and then the method that we want to aggregate with is sum and that's going to give me a data frame again where we have our sectors or groupings represented as the index labels to the left and to the right we're going to have the sum total of all of the revenue and profits values for those companies in that group and so that's just a little bit on some of the methods that we can call on our a group by object as well as some of the uh, columns that we can extract from our data frames and call uh, those similar methods on, depends on what we want to do. And in the next lesson we'll continue on this uh, operation and we'll explore the process of grouping by multiple columns.